Looking to test new Facebook ad creative for your e-commerce business? Awesome. Today we're going to talk about what you should do after launching your campaigns. Maybe you are running some retargeting or prospecting campaigns. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you should check out these videos first. But assuming that you have some ads that are live and you need now to introduce some new ad creatives, then you definitely want to understand that you don't want to mess up the performance of the ads because sometimes you can shock the campaign and that will negatively affect the performance of your ads. And that can be very frustrating, especially when you have a high return on spend. Now, a question that might come up is why should I introduce new ads? Why should I launch new creatives when I already have a high return on spend? That is a good question. You gotta understand that social media is a content driven platform. The more content you put in front of the customers, the more likely for them will be to buy. You see, your ads might get fatigued, meaning is that people will get bored of seeing your ad creatives over and over and over. And at that time, they just skip your ad. That's why what we gotta do is we have to prevent that. Not wait until the return is declining, but prevent that in advance. Now, once you know why, it's time to show you how to. So we wanna start with a prospecting campaign that will be meant only and only for testing. Depending on your ad budget, you wanna create different ad sets. And for each ad set, you wanna spend at least $20 per day per ad set. If your budget is $100 per day, and assuming that you put aside $20 for retargeting, you have $80 for prospecting. So you can start with four testing ad sets if you don't have a scaling campaign, which I'm gonna talk a little bit later on. In each ad set, you wanna have three ads, not one, not two, not four, not five, three ads. And with every single ad when you start, you want to have big differences between those ad creatives. Because at the time, you don't know what is going on and what is working the best for your ad account. On the other hand, if you have some data in your ad account, then you can start with iterative testing, where you test some small things. For example, you tested three ads, one video, one image, and one carousel. Video is working the best. You take that video and you change the first three seconds, and you have three different variations for that ad with different hooks. Or you take that video and you test only the ad copies. So we wanna test in isolation. And after all those changes, and after all those iterative testings, then you take that ad and you start scaling. Also, when it comes to those ad sets, to the audiences that you are using, test with broader audiences, with interests that have millions and millions of people in those interests. Or even broad audiences with open targeting, with no detailed targeting, especially if your pixel is quite trained enough and you have some kind of traction for your pixel events. Now, I'm gonna give you a direct example. Let's imagine that we have three ad sets. In each ad set, we will have three ads. And let's say that we have three different audiences. In that case, we will have the same three ad creators. So after three to four days, we go back to our ad manager account and we take a look at the performance. Now I have some other videos on how to analyze your ads, on which metrics to take a look at. You can check those videos out after watching this one. But basically what we gotta look at is our return ad spend first of all. If you have a much higher budget for your marketing, then I would recommend first of all testing more in isolation those ads that they performed better but if you don't then take the ads with a high performance and copy and paste it in another campaign that will be for scaling and don't look at the ad set level but at the ad level it's extremely important to understand this because sometimes we can see the return ad spend the overall return ad spend on the ad set level is not very good but on the ad level, we can see some kind of ads, they have a very high return on spend. A rule that I follow is if the lifetime spend of one specific ad is higher than your average order value and you have zero purchases, then cut it. Or if you don't want to risk very much, see at your lifetime spend if it's half of your average order value and you didn't get any add to cart, again, cut that ad. But if you observe that you have ads with a return on spend of 2.5x, this is important, 2.5x plus, then take that ad and put it in the scaling campaign. And also considering that it got more than three purchases because usually we might be too happy when we see one purchase with a 10x return on spend. In that case, that ad is still not proven. 
because when you're just launching an ad, Facebook might go after low hanging fruits and it's very easy to get a very high return on spend. We want to see the longevity of an ad. If I get a 2.5x and I get free purchases, that is telling me that ad might have potential for a much higher spend. As you spend more, you are targeting a much broader audience, not so targeted in your niche. So those people, even if they are kind of interested in your products, it will be much harder to convert. That's why you have to have some room for your return on spend. When you have a 2.5, you know that if you are scaling, your return on spend might decline a little bit, but you are going to still be profitable. When you do introduce new ads into your testing campaign, make sure that you introduce only and only ads that they have some data behind that. So what do I mean by that? Well, a problem that might be is that you are testing new ads, you are launching a lot and a lot of creatives, but they are kind of random like set they are. So that's why you're going to be in that testing mode for a long period of time and you're not going to be able to scale. It's important to launch ads that they have some data and informations and patterns from the winning ads. With them you're just adjusting a few things so they have kind of the same feeling, the same scent, but it looks new to the user. Now that doesn't mean that you don't want to introduce new ad creatives. What I'm saying is that focus more on the ads, focus more on the creatives that they have some track record, let's say in this way, and put less budget into the ads that you've never tested and you definitely don't know either it's gonna work or not. With the proven ads that you duplicate and you insert them into your scaling campaign, do not delete them. I just leave those ads in the testing campaign until it dies out. So very often you can have your scaling campaign where you're spending more money with that ad and you also can have that testing campaign. And basically that is just generating you an additional revenue. So why should you turn that off? Of course if you see that ad stopped working, in that case kill it. But in other cases just let it run. A simple and very easy formula to use in your ads manager is if it's working, simply do not touch it, period. And trust me, it's working perfectly fine. I remember I got some questions from my clients and they asked me, how are you, do, can you make so good ads and they're working so well and consistently? And in my mind, well, I simply don't touch them. So you basically do less work, but you get much better results. That is how you work smartly. A final question that we have to ask her is how frequently should we launch new ads? I would say as much as possible. If you're on a tight budget, then this is the bare minimum, at least once per week. And you can introduce one ad, but that will limit your scaling capabilities. Ideally, it would be three to six ads every single week. That will give you a lot of room for scaling because you are constantly and constantly introducing ads and if you are very smart and you are making the right decisions with your ad creatives, meaning is that you are launching ads that they have some proven patterns and data, then you will observe the scaling is gonna be very very easy for you. What happens after following this structure? You get faster results, you understand much better what's working and what's not in your ad account and you also stay much more organized and it's much easier for you to navigate through your ad account. If you enjoyed this video be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss one of the future videos and let me know in the comments if you have some questions and don't forget the more you test, the better and the faster you'll get the results that you want.